Okay, today we're going to talk about uh, EMS system communications. So basically what we're going to do is just go over um, kind of on a national standard of what type of systems we're dealing out there with communications. Hopefully most of you are very familiar with this already, but this is just going to be a general uh, review. Unfortunately, there are certain questions on National Registry that do come out on this, so just kind of want to go over that and uh, kind of hit and talk about those issues. So basically, there's different type of communications we're getting out there. The first person, um, where we're doing a face-to-face, -face. we will be talking on telephone, and we'll talk about that, where a lot of times you have to call into medical control um, and different things on scene. Uh, we'll talk about voice um, over the radio and different types of uh, dialogue we've done in the past. Um, and then what we're really doing now, um, and kind of really just go through all the steps of process there. So um, basically, we're talking several different ways, whether we're talking to dispatch, whether we're talking to family, bystanders, the patient themselves, or other agencies that we're working with in general and, and, and what we're going to do. There's also going to be the communication that we're going to have to be doing from um, both if we're going to physician's office or urgent care facilities, nursing homes, um, as well as the communication we're going to have in the hospital itself. And then it's basically, they're going to kind of get into going over the national aspects of when we used to do um, special codes. We used to, used to have 10 codes here anymore that we don't do. Um, realistically, everything we're trying to do now is going to be on simplest basis of communication so everyone understands. Um, and when we're talking about that, again, um, there's still codes that they'll use, the police departments will use, uh, that are encoded to basically keep certain things private, and we do have a couple of those, like our code 99s and, and such. But uh, generally, we want our communication to be pretty um, easily understood um, without having to do any special coded messages, things like that, which we used to actually do. This is pretty much straightforward here. I don't think I should have to touch on to this, but basically our big thing is we want to use plain English um, and make sure our communication in simplest forms. And then um, based on when we are reporting or calling into the hospitals and that, um, kind of the things that we will be doing is what is the patient's part of it? This is code one traffic. This is code three traffic. Um, this is no code traffic, however you want to say it. Um, basically, communicating the hospital of the level of priority you have with that patient coming in. And then basically relaying the information that you need to do. Um, hitting the topics, and we'll talk about our patch reports when we're doing that to what you want to relay, a quick, easy format that gets to them, and then uh, how you can relay that information quick and easy to the staff. Um, a lot of times, too, when we have to do that, and we're transport, uh, excuse me, when we're uh, communicating that information over there, it's who we are, what was the scene, what was our patient, what was their complaint, and then briefly, what have we done? What's the, the pertinent past medical history of what we've done when we're communicating that over? Uh, more so, we do a sample history on that as well when we're passing those findings out, and, and we'll talk about that also when we're doing reports, um, giving the exam what treatments we've done um, and when we're going to show up to the hospital. And then when we talk about other pertinent information um, that they're going to ask for, the big thing I always relay there is, do you have any questions? Because it's very easy to leave them, some things out in your patch reports. Um, you'll forget to say some pertinent information, so any questions so you can fill that in. But we want to be a clear, concise, quick patch report out there. We don't want to be talking for hours and hours, um, which if you listen to patch reports out there, you'll hear some of them are very long. Some of them are actually just too short and doesn't give enough information. Um, again, we want to be very clear when we're coming in. Um, make sure you're listening to the channel, especially for those of you familiar with the HEAR system, waiting so you're not just transmitting and you walk over someone else that's going um, and being clear, concise, so they understand what you're saying. Speaking in a normal pitch of voice, and that's any time you're over the radio. Um, and you'll see our, our new systems with the uh, 800 megahertz um, will actually only allow you to talk so much time anyway, so you're not wasting your time. It'll shut you, it'll shut you off. Um, and of course, as with anything, we want to make sure that we don't have anything that uh, releases uh, something about the patient and being HIPAA compliance. Um, using general information um, across talking to dispatch, 
um, and making sure that you understand that and getting clear and concise um, readbacks so that each party understands clearly what the message was that you were trying to do. Um, the next aspect will be in your, your PCRs that we'll be doing, and we'll be doing multiple of these of going over what we're doing, um, how you get this so you've got your times, um, reporting this down, because realistically when you're doing a PCR, you're doing it for an attorney is who you're writing it for. So you want to be clear, concise, and we're going to talk really a lot of detail on this when you do your report of what we're expecting, how to relay information, what not to put down when you're doing in there, um, and being as a complete a report as possible. Um, and we've got some really um, complicated aspects of how we report things, especially when we're dealing with those patients who may be altered mental status and how we relay that and what we put that down. Because again, you're doing the reports technically for the attorneys and for uh, a jury. And how you put the information down can be brought against you. And we'll talk again really in depth on that of how you report things. Um, and then making sure everything's legible. Again, most of our reports now are done through the computer, so it's typed out. But going back through that information, if you have the, if you don't have spell check through your report writing system, I like to write my reports out on uh, Microsoft Word because when I'm typing really fast, I misspell words and things like that too. So at least it's something to catch you and make sure you reread your report and that you actually documented the what you read is kind of what you were thinking. There are some acronyms that are acceptable and some abbreviations that are acceptable. But try not to use abbreviations out there because they can be misconstrued to a lot of different things. So within normal limits is one WNL. It's one I really don't like out there. So um, we'll talk more about this in another um, format, but it's finding out what we can use. Um, here's some common radio terminology um, that's basically out there that you can use over there to, to do quicker on there. But a lot of the times you can just stay clear English, simple format is what we're looking for out there, not the 10-4 codes. Like you see there, 10-4, 10-1, 10-9. There's a lot of those 10 10 codes out there that we used to use. So plain English is going to be the, the quickest thing. Um, and then again, it's talking in a clear voice, calm voice. Um, if you listen to someone who's giving their initial size up report or initial on scene and they're very calm, it keeps you calm. When they get excited, um, it kind of tends to let the scene go up. And we'll talk about that more with scene control as well. And then um, the process of how you were notified. There's multiple different ones. We're pretty much just going through 911 calls is going to be our most aspect. But we also have um, where patients will come right into a station and do walk-ins. So a lot of different things of where we get um, and where that information came from. Um, the other aspect that is hard, and I've come across this too, is when the actual caller is a third base caller who's on the way on the route to the place and gives us an address um, and it's actually wrong. I've had that where I was given an address that was a south address and it was technically supposed to be an east address so we go to the wrong place because it's not coming from the person um, who needs help but it's coming from a third party. So a lot of different things there that can also be different. Other aspect now is wireless. Most people do not have a home phone, but they have a wireless phone. And if they don't know where they're at, that GPS doesn't bring it up like they did with the home phones. Um, they're starting to get those areas, but it can be difficult, especially for myself. I live in Stevens County, but uh, my cell phone registers to the Spokane County. So different aspects there that is more on a communication standpoint if you're in dispatching that. But it is trying to find out exactly where you're going and uh, notifying that as well. Also, there's a lot of vehicles that have the um, uh, advanced notification responses in the car. And I apologize, I can, my brain farting at this point in time, I can't think of the actual GPS system that I'm thinking, and you guys are probably all know from there that's inside the cars that will notify dispatch for someone that the vehicle has been in a wreck. So those are out there as well. Um, lots of different ways that it gets to dispatch, um, and then from them they're going to, based on key phrases and things, uh, dispatch us out. 
as we all know, I've been dispatched to a Bravo call that probably should have been a Delta call and turns into an Echo call, same as I've been dispatched to Delta calls that really are Bravo calls or maybe Alpha calls. But based on how words and how you state things to dispatch, they're going to elevate that level of call of, of where it needs to be. Um, they're also going to be the ones giving you the short purport. Um, and based on that, that information, you're going to kind of be deciding of what you're going to and formulating what you're expecting to be on there. But again, multiple times I've been given a short report and it's something completely different when I get there. And I'm sure you guys have experienced that as well. Um, this is something that uh, should be utilized quite a bit. Um, if you're on certain calls and you think you need to do something outside the specs or you want area aspect is calling the hospitals, letting them know, not only to um, check to see, uh, well, is this going to be a cardiac and I need to, to call in an activation, or is this septic, and if there's a lot of those cases where that are, you're susceptible, that it, you think it is going to be this, but you're not sure, um, you can always call and get that, or if you think something needs to be done that's outside your scope, you can always call in and ask, um, hey, can I do this, or give an advice you know, to be able to, to do some other things. And then when we're transferring that care, whether it's going to be to a nurse or a physician, depending on who's in the hospital and you get that handoff, it's giving them all the information and, and knowing that. So if you're a transporting agency and fire is passing off to you, you've got to ask all those questions possible so you can pass on to the, to the physician as well. So also if you're a fire based, you need to be asking those questions and be able to transfer as much information to the transport um, agency so that they're capable of giving the, the proper report and a good handoff to the physicians as well. So your report from a non-transport agency to a transport agency should you be the same, assume you're passing it off to the physician at the hospital so that it's all getting passed off correctly. Because that's what happens when we do go in the hospital. They're asking us all the questions and if you didn't do a good pass off to the transport agency, they're not going to be able to pass off the best information to the hospital. So, um, big thing is, is obviously too, is that uh, that transfer of care. Um, I've actually been on scene and witnessed where a crew actually left. They said, yeah, the patient's upstairs. And so there technically could have been an abandonment situation between there where one crew came on, said, yep, your ambulance is on the way, and they walked out the door, and we got no transfer, and it's kind of started over again. So I have seen this happen. Um, so. Again, you got to make sure you stay with that patient. Um, you cannot abandon that patient unless you've got a release form sign or unless you've passed off. So be careful on that and then documenting that. And we'll talk about um, releases and, and that as well. Um, big thing is also we'll talk about situational awareness. We'll put you through a ton of those different areas of when to go on scene, when not to go on scene. Um, and standing by until you have the right information, especially on site calls, where to position yourself um, in shooting situations or active situations where the scene is is moving. So a lot of different things, and then interacting with the police, which is another. We'll talk about a couple scenarios that's come across where um, we actually have our 911 system is divided between police and EMS. And those two agencies don't necessarily talk, so you could be going on the same call and there's no talking between that. And that's happened in multiple incidents, so we'll bring up some scenarios with that as well. Um, we're also going to talk about how the communication system works, um, whether we're using VHF or whether we're using a new 800 megahertz system, and how that works with repeated towers and what's repeated and what's not when we're dealing with um, different technology of what's We'll talk about trunking. We'll talk about all sorts of different things. But based on the areas, some areas we have repeater towers and we need that to get communication and go over there. Some of those are going to be line of sight. There's lots of different things that will come up based on the area that work out. And so we're going to talk about different areas in Spokane and of what areas are unrepeated, what areas we need to be on the old uh, VHS channels where it works good and where the 800 megahertz system works really good um, and bouncing between those. Um, working in a... Uh, city area, the the megahertz works fantastic, especially on fire situations there. But when we talk about wildland fire systems, it's the VHF system and working with those departments that have that, like DNR and, and other outside agencies. Um, we're going to talk about how we communicate. 
um, and there's different type of systems. The simplex transmission, where you can send and just talk, but only one person can be talking at this at one time, um, and it's just either voice or it's data transmission. Um, whereas with a duplex, we're actually able to do um, voice and data um, and transmit information across that, which is kind of where we are doing a little bit more um, into the multiplex systems where we can transmit data, we can transmit voice, and we can talk over each other um, back and forth in a VHS system, whereas with the megahertz, 800 megahertz system, it actually stops, only one person can be talking, so you're not walking over each other. And that's kind of our trunk system where it pools the frequency and it opens up of what extra channel and and we'll get into more of this when we talk into systems, but our trunk systems basically works within a range and it opens up a frequency that's next available. It'll automatically, through a computer, reroute you. The hard part with this is we've experienced a couple times is when that computer goes down, we lose everything on that channel and it's not very useful and have to be able to have a backup system like the BHF um, to be able to talk. The nice part about it is it works fast. It automatically picks the best frequency, the best channel to get the clearest communication across. Um, and it has been fantastic in that route. As with any technology, though, we do based on how well it works um, and have to really rely on that computer to maintain everything. If that computer goes down, uh, our communications go down. Um, also, hooking these up with our uh, data units are basically computers out there to get that communication over there um, using GPS with those, um, identifying the location, routing us, whole different things that it can be doing. Um, and it works out really well. The cellular aspect um, for myself, if I work up at uh, District 4, I use that quite a bit for routing myself around and uh, talking in areas, but same thing, I get in remote areas, I've got minimal radio communication, I've got no cell service up there too. So it's knowing how to communicate and how to talk in those spots. Um, I know City Fire did not allow cell phones. I don't know if they continue not to. We'll talk about this in class. But I think a cell phone is very useful to have. One, to be able to get and talk um, for uh, poisonings and that, uh, to get other information. Also communicating with the hospitals to let them know. And then lastly, um, it's fantastic to take pictures. Now, I know it's limited on what we can take, but again, relay, getting pictures of just the scene without having HIPAA violations with that, that you can portray to the, the doctors and receiving hospitals is going to be huge um, of explaining, okay, this is the wreck. This was what was on them. This is what they came out with. Um, a picture's, you know, fantastic. You can take a video of this lot. Again, you can actually related to that doc of, hey, here's how serious this area was, even if the patient is not showing some of those things. This right here you guys should be well versed with that I don't need to go over. Um, and again, this kind of goes into where I was talking about where I think cell phones are a huge part um, of adding to your system. Being able to talk over the radio, but having that cell phone is another part that has been vital, at least in my experiences out there as well. Um, this is something we really didn't really go over um, before, but again, having that ability to um, have electronic basis of going through. For those of you who work with AMR, it's actually really nice, at least with Deaconess, we were able to transmit 12 leads immediately over to them um, and three leads to the docs as well. So there's a lot more um, communication aspects that are improving with technology that we'll be able to get over and hopefully we'll have that um, more response. Again, I don't know if, if uh, you're able to send and receive to Sacred Heart at this point or not. You guys may be able to. I'm just not aware of that as I don't work for AMR anymore. Um, but those are different things that are out there. So a lot of uh, aspects of growing technology that's making things better for us and transmitting. Pretty soon we will be able to um, transmit video, audio, um, over to the hospitals of showing some information, especially with our long transport times that we may potentially have that, uh, again, just relays that system over so the receiving units know exactly what to do. Especially when you're out in rural areas, um, it's kind of nice to be able to uh, get a hold of that dock ahead of time because of long transport times that are out there. But the downside is, is as you get into more rural areas, you don't have um, 
that communication technology out there and you've got not as many towers and not able to transmit. The other thing is we get into rural areas too, we have less um, ALS and so they've got to deal with a lot more in the BLS system and wait until they can get rendezvoused with a ALS transport agency, um, whether that be ground transport or be air transport. transport sorry. So, um, big thing here is again, doing ways to follow up and, and we're going to talk more about community medicine um, later, but this will hopefully reduce our amount of transports that are out there because we can do more preventative care, talking with the patients, do follow up after discharge, make sure patients are taking their medication, they know when to call, um, when to set up follow ups with their family physician service and it's going to save a lot of time and effort um, once this really comes into play and it's finding the right way to do that. Um, I know there's been talk about community paramedicine of where uh, the paramedics are actually coming out, coming out and capable of writing prescriptions, removing sutures, placing sutures as need be, and uh, doing some things there. I think we're a long ways away from that, but that's kind of the process and um, we'll have uh, Mike Lopez, I believe, coming and talking to you more about where the community paramedicine is planning and where it's going. But as new technology comes off and comes around, we're able to do a lot more things and we'll talk more about that. Um, there are some people right now who are doing two um, speech to text translation and it works fantastic where they're able to um, do this in route. I really like this when I was a physician. I had everything dictated and it made it so much nicer to have that out there because I'm not a slow, I mean I am a slow typer. So uh, things like that that you can use to make your life easier is going to be huge. And then there's some areas where you're able to get receipt of uh, everything, your patient records, everything from there and get aspect um, imported especially into your PCRs but have access to that. There's a lot more things that are coming up and we'll see what happens in the future as far as um, keeping medical records and databases and scanning things in um, to basically uh, get that information very quickly and have a patient's drug list um, right there, easy access instead of having to go search bathrooms and finding pills and figure out what it is. Um, again, this is kind of getting out, out there, but uh, there's a lot of different things out there, especially with the Da Vinci robots and things like that. that we're not going to be uh, applying to our areas, but depending on where you work, there's a lot of things, especially with the military, where they have that where a physician in the states can actually be working remotely and do surgeries in Afghanistan and other places. Um, so a lot of fantastic technology that's coming out there. It uh, doesn't really apply to us, but depending on what you're going to be doing, we don't know where you're going to be working there. So um, again, a lot of it, information that's going to be building up and things that are going to come up as technology improves of how we communicate. Our step into the 800 megahertz so that we can talk uh, and get more agencies talking together is going to a huge improvement with us um, and only have plans to get better as we can actually communicate better with the police department, which I have not really seen at this point in time. But as we get that interagency inter communication, that's going to make a, a huge area of, of taking care of the patients. Um, and then with fire scenes and that, being able to communicate with all different aspects between talking to the helicopter, air support, DNR, um, other agencies as we work together that's been the huge push of where we're going. It's all re reg regulated by the FCC who kind of goes over those and designates a frequency um, and gets our licensing, how they can use it and kind of watching over the personnel of um, who takes care of our radios, who takes care of our, our system and dispatching all those information and they're going to be monitoring and checking systems so that we're actually using the appropriate frequencies and using appropriate language and communication as we're doing over those. Um, so as there's more advances, as there's more things, it's just going to make our life easier and it's going to be actually much better for the patient um, and communicating that information over to the physicians um, to where we get transmit. And I kind of have to laugh when we talk about transmission systems. If you watch the old uh, emergency shows, they actually were able to transmit, um, again, it was television, but they transmit the four leads um, slash three leads over to the hospital very easily through communication. And we're going to be able to get to those bases where you can be talking to a physician and be deciding what you need to be able to do. Um, and again, be able to be better patient care. So. Um, 
that's kind of it where we are today. Uh, we'll go over a lot of these scenarios and talk a little bit more in class and uh, go over some more information then. All right, thanks guys.